dice and the almighty d20. I'm looking at doing a version 2 of one of my role-playing games and I was thinking about dice probabilities. So we start off with a d20. D&D, everyone knows the d20. Here's the thing about the d20. It's a pretty big number. Your bonuses are pretty small. And so the d20 probability graph looks something like that. You always have a 5% chance and because a 1 always misses and a 20 always succeeds, everyone has a chance. Every roll, there's hope. But the advantage is, in D&D, you roll a shit ton of dice. And eventually, the dice balance out, right? So you get the cinematic feel, but the system works out by doing lots of dice rolls. The best addition, though, replacing the advantage, disadvantage, bonuses of plus 2, plus 4, or whatever, is you roll 2d20. And then when you roll 2d20, you take the highest. Oh my god, is that a 12 and a 12? Very unlikely. Let's say it was a 12 and 15. You take the 15. If it's a disadvantage, you take the 12. That takes this curve and it changes it into that. I mean, really, it changes it into that where the middle goes in the middle line and that doesn't come in. But yes, you see how the curve completely shifts. Advantage and disadvantage is one of the best game design alterations made to the system. Now, some people may recognize fate dice. These D6s or D3s really are rolled, always four of them. So the roll is consistent, players are never confused. And a number, oh look, and four successes, so that's a plus four. And then if there were minuses, you would just take those away. Very easy, no math. You always roll the same amount of dice. But the best part about fake dice or fudge dice is the probability curve works out to looking something like that with a strong zero in the middle. So you can roll much fewer rolls and immediately you know the fewer rolls will be like fairish because it's more predictable. You're not going to get a wild swing throwing everything out the window. But again, doesn't have the cinematic feel of that. But it is simple. It's very approachable. You always roll those. It is nicer with specialty dice, but mm, is what it is. But then in the 90s comes White Wolf and the D10s, the exploding D10s. This system, you rolled however many dice you had, and you set a target number, usually six. And that means anything over a six is a success. So there's three successes. But if anything's a 10, it explodes. You add the successes and re-roll. So then that's four successes plus that success I just rolled. So that's five, five, six successes. That explodes again. So six successes roll on five dice. That exploding 10 is excitement. Again, the one is a fumble or a negative success. Now that system has a very different probability curve. It's much harder to draw out, but it looks something like this. It goes, when you have very few dice, your chance of success looks something like that. And then immediately it drops down and then eventually it normalizes. And you would think that exploding D10s would make a huge difference to this curve. But really what the exploding D10 does to the probability curve is it takes it from, this is for rolling quite a few dice, it takes it from something like that to something like that. A very slight shift. It's actually, from a math point of view, not a big deal. But it feels different. It feels really strong, especially when you're only rolling, say, three dice. And then it's like, well, oh, okay. So this, there's two successes, but one fumble, so they cancel out. But then this could explode. Oh, it's exploded again. And then a fumble. So it takes off. But again, as you can see, tracking the number of successes becomes a bit tricky and the probability curves get a bit wild and complicated, but it is really exciting. I would argue the D10 system is a superior dice roll from a math point of view. The difference between using a success-based system where you get a number of successes versus succeeding on a dice roll and then rolling damage dice. First of all, damage dice in D&D, terrible. It's always, it varies. It's a range. It's complicated. 
but it means that you always roll more rolls and it means the second roll is conditional so players aren't always prepared for it whereas number of successes often implements the degree of success the damage into the success mechanic leading to fewer rolls and faster play but as i've learned over the years math isn't everything and the advantage roll of d20s is really nice the simplicity of always rolling 4d6 and not having the explosion can be quite nice but the explosion again is very good side note some systems used a similar system to the d10 system but used d6s usually a lot more of them and smaller numbers basically the same thing when you look at the probability curves they don't change much the explosions and fumbles become more common but mm, it's not that different it is more approachable in that the d6 is a more familiar dice you can buy lots of them for cheaper but the, the feel of rolling a different dice that you don't come across in day-to-day -day is more interesting. And I think that's why the White Wolf D10 system was usually more popular. We want a mix of something with the, the swing of the advantage and disadvantage, but we want something with the familiarity of the 4D6. So I started playing around and I was like, well, what if you rolled a maximum number system, right? So let's say you were rolling D10s, and the amount of dice you rolled is your skill or your bad chance or whatever. And then what you're doing is you're taking the largest number rolled. So there's always only one dice. That means on small rolls, again, you get the flat line of the D20. But then on bigger rolls, you get more like the curve. Your chance of success goes up. The curve still looks a little bit dull for a D10 max roll. It looks for one dice, something like that. And then for lots of dice, it looks something like that. And various gradients in between. And the gradations, honestly, the difference between rolling five dice and rolling 10 dice or even seven dice is, it's not really noticeable. Once you sort of cross the three threshold, your line is ending up about here. Taking up everything we're knowing, what if we're rolling number of d10s and we always take the highest two numbers so we're taking the nine and the ten there right now the probability curve for one dice looks something like this and then the probability dice for two looks like that and then by the time we get up to ten it looks very similar it looks very curvy so we get this wild range we've got the chance of the high success on the single roll but being good at something just means the probability of success goes up, not the extent of success. So yeah, this is me being thinking about dice rolls a lot. Let me know in the comments which dice do you like to roll? Which dice systems have you used that you find particularly interesting? There's a lot of very um, niche dice systems, very flavorful dice systems for specific things. What sort of generic dice systems, dice rolls do you like to see?